We're glad to know you're still there and watching us. It's the run-up on uh, Plus TV Africa. And we still have Otumba Shegun Shomi here with us. He is um, the governorship candidate for Ogun State under the umbrella, under the PDP as it is. Um, once again, uh, Otumba, we're glad that you're here to answer our questions. Um, recently, the presidency or the federal government pushed all the blame of poverty uh, in Nigeria to the state governors. And this is the office that you intend to occupy. Uh, let's start with that. Do you think that allegation by the federal government to state governments, or, or state governors rather, was fair? Thank you very much. You see, I have, I have, I have also entertained that thought in my mind. And I'll tell you what I mean by I've entertained that thought. I've asked myself often, what if the federal government of Nigeria was not giving the state money for Subed? What exactly would they have done with their primary education up to the first three years? I've asked myself, was it that, what if the federal government wasn't doing so much for the local government? Why is it that from the generated internal revenue of the state, they're not doing enough for their local government? I've asked myself, why is it that if the federal government is not trying to do pro poor intervention, what am I trying to say? I have entertained that thought, but I don't exactly agree with the federal government. Mm. The hallmark of a leader, a reasonably wise one, is to entertain a thought without necessarily accepting it. Now, why am I not accepting the position of the federal government? It comes down to the structure of government that we are running. If you insist that you are going to sit down in Abuja, and do a national weighted average of how much salary I have to pay my own workers without taking into consideration the revenue, the outcome, and the monies I have, you are not helping the development that you want to help. If you insist that you are going to decide the curriculum that I'm going to use to teach people in my own part of the country, you are not helping the direction of natural growth I want to go. So, I blame the federal government for this policy thing around poverty and lack of development insofar as I know that they are trying to do more than they are naturally endowed to do. You are not closest to the people. How will I not blame you for security when you don't even have the courage to allow the state governors and probably local government to secure themselves? If you insist on being the only one in charge of security and police and army and all that, then who am I going to blame if there's insecurity? That's why I said I've entertained that thought, but I don't agree. Having said that, I am absolutely beyond persuasion that the, most of our governors are irresponsible up till now. Irresponsible in the sense that I have never understood how people will come into government as governor leave the place with still so much to do, and then come out and be claiming that they are very rich. I've never understood how a governor or government at the state or local government will not regulate audit itself and be waiting for the ESC of the federal government. I, I can't understand it. Because most often times they're not, we can even find the thief. We can even see the, you know, the goods he stole in front of us. And yet we must pretend that until EFCC and ICPC come, we cannot do what is right by our people. I can't understand the fixation of all the states are doing humongous, uh, big, big project bridges and all that when they cannot even figure out how to do rural roads. I can't understand how state governments in Nigeria have not been able to understand that if you do not have the poor in the budget, invariably, your democracy does not even make sense. Because the rich can take care of themselves somehow, but it is the poor who will have to deal with the issue of, oh, how are we going to be able to eat? Oh, how are we going to be able to do the things that the poor need to do? And yet, what we see in our country today is that the poor are the ones that are not even getting attended to because we have chosen to be doing infrastructure that can maybe give us money, whereas the simple basic thing, for instance, if I become governor in Ogun, I've said to them, and I've said it clearly, one of the reasons why we are not doing well with education now 
is because we are not paying attention to early education, which is the nursery school. And if the federal government is willing to pay for primary school, shall I not find the money to pay for nursery school for free? So these are the kinds of thinking. If you are not doing enough with rural road, the laws as they stand today does not say that the state government cannot privatize or get into making the environment easy and useful and you know more attractive for foreign money to come and do some social product at a cost. The law as we have it today does not say governors should not pay pension or pay retirees or pay their teachers. And I don't understand this fixation in the country today where people will come into government very broke, they will be leaving government very rich, and we'll be pretending I don't, we don't know where they got the money from. So that's why I said I can have entertained that thought. But I do not agree because I have seen the, you know, the structural equivalences. Take the case of Peter Obi, for instance. To some extent, people said he did well in Anambra. How do you consider that Peter has done well in the real sense when all the money he claimed he saved and in the face of a lot of gaping holes for infrastructure and to modernize the place? has been stolen by his successor. And by the nature of the Nigerian political space, he would have had a hand in installing that successor. How the hell did it become a case that he could not even copy what the bulletin board had done, which is fine better than them as successors? So you get what I'm trying to say. If we don't adjust it, we'll just be struggling. I don't like us to just be arguing or talking for talking sake. All I right, let's let's get the country to work. Let's 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 just uh, take a break from what you're saying now. Um, we're actually I know that when we started in the first segment, we were, we touched a little bit about the manifesto uh, and the plans for uh, Nigeria by your principal. I have also Honorable Vincent Ubani here, the Director General of the Nigerian Youth, uh, as they are called, and he's standing by. Honorable uh, Ubani, welcome to the program. Now that you have already money, can I go ahead and go and do other things while you and the money continue to come up? Sorry? Okay, it's fine. It's fine, sir. But otherwise, I had a few more questions for you. But Honorable Ubani, welcome to the run-up. Honorable Ubani, please unmute. Thank you very much for having me here with you. Okay. So uh, the last speaker, Otumba uh, Shegun Shomi, just uh, uh, talked about uh, some things about continuity from Peter Obi. Uh, he just mentioned Peter Obi. And we're interested in the manifest manifesto that uh, Peter Obi and the Labour Party released recently, the 62-page document that was released uh, recently. Uh, because we don't have a lot of time, so be very brief, um, let's get to have a peek into that manifesto uh, explained to us how uh, whatever was meant in that manifesto. Okay, thank you. Um, once again, I, I am Honorable Vincent Antonio Bani, the Global Director General of the Nigerian Youth Headquarters, and the I'm the President General of the Coalition of All Young Aspirants and Candidates in Nigeria and the um, Diaspora. Per, per venture, we are now all working on one agenda, which is to produce a new era of new Nigeria, the new Nigeria of the younger generation dream, no longer the old political system or uh, uh, ideology. And I think the manifesto of His Excellency, the incoming president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, uh, has spoken so large well on times of how to tackle the problems in the country. But you must agree with me that it's not about the manifesto. It's about we being able to call a spade a spade. We've been suffering so dearly in this country a lot of things has gone so wrong in this country. And that we, the politicians, has betrayed us so dearly that we can no longer tolerate the game of the old politicians. Now, we are not interested in manifesto. What we are interested in, we don't want the old system to continue in Nigeria. 
People have died in a large number. I mean, thousands of people have been killed. This is not natural death. We are talking about killed. Killed by kidnapping, killed by ki uh, Ill 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 illegal gunshots, killed by uh, robbing, killed by bomb blast, uh, terrorist attack, different... Honorable, Honorable Obani, Honorable Obani, we have to understand some things here. Um, uh, first of all, you talked about being a coalition of the youths and all that. Uh, we don't know the uh, yes, age bracket that you called. Just a moment. We don't know the age bracket that you called uh, youth. We need to know that. And secondly, you say you're not interested in manifesto. Manifesto is supposed to be a guide for anyone who is coming in to look at and say, okay, this is my, my covenant with the people. This is what I intend to do. And let me follow it step by step. So when you say you're not interested in the manifesto, uh, I don't know what you really mean. Like, let's just go, whatever we meet, we do. Anyway, belief face, like we say in Nigeria. We need my to brother, be clear in that my regard brother, so that we don't misinterpret. My brother, when I, when I told you it's not about the manifesto, it's because I know very well that there have been a lot of people, politicians coming up with different manifesto. And at the end of the day, it ends in zero because the manifesto is just a paper but this is not what that they present to us that it's been happening in the end of the day when you make them the, the in government for example apc we came I, i'm a member of the apc presidential campaign council in 2019 i worked not only worked the young leaders the young leaders in this country was duped was was fooled by the apc government they they duped us they made us spend our money. They made us use everything we have to bring President Buhari back to power. They agreed in the document that they are giving 40% of youth in governance. What happened at the end of the day? Zero percent. No young, no one young person was given any single appointment. After we worked, after we were even fooled, use our name to publish as the presidential council and so on. And they made us use our money. We invested our money in Buhari's government. And uh, what happens at the end of the day, scarlet school, school fields, students are dropping out of school. And when you talk, they, they arrest you, they humiliate you, they threaten you, they want to kill you. And this is all we get. So the manifesto is, as long as I'm concerned, is trash. We want a new era of younger generation to take over leadership. We want a new Nigeria. We, 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 I'm not talking about manifesto. Let's first collapse the old system, the old criminal system, and bring a new system, which Peter will be, is the one that is in a good position to guarantee this new generation system. And I did not tell you about youth, I'm telling you about young candidates. Young candidates, in the sense, the young ones who, after the passage of the not too young to run bill, that we are now seen as a scam, because this bill, since it has been passing into law, we have it has cost us much than good because we young people who feels okay the bill has been passed let's try our best the, at the end of the war happened, they rigged the election at the end of the day they, they rigged the election there is no election happening in nigeria all they do is to rig the election rig themselves in the office you understand so all, that's why i said it's not about manifesto and i don't want to look about manifesto i want to look about how to end the old ceiling corrupt system that is being operated and we are facing two people in this election the INEC must understand that it's not going to be business as usual. Nobody is coming to rig the 2022 election, to be very frank with you, because we will not tolerate it. The masses are not going to tolerate it. As long as I'm concerned, the masses will rise against anybody who tries to rig in election in 2023. We are fed and we are tired of the system. We want a new Nigeria. His Excellency Peter B is a new Nigeria that we want. Him and his deputy, a vice president, is good to go. And we have, I think, we have gotten to a resolve to that effect. And the world has seen it through the mega rally that has been held all over the world, that we want a new Nigeria. And Peter Obi is the one with his vice, is the one that we have chosen. Just so briefly, very, yes, very briefly now before we, we go, let's round off here. Um, uh, a lot of people yes. have said that even though... Uh, We've heard so many things from Peter B. Anambra State is not really a state that you can look at and say, oh, because of Peter B, it is like this. So if you have the experience of Anambra State, what is that marked thing that we can see in Anambra State and attribute it to Peter B that has marked out Anambra State? 
Because in Lagos, for instance, they say the IGR rose up and it's still continuing till today. And so many other things that are being ascribed to Ashiwaju uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, even though he didn't directly do them. They said he had a master plan for it. What are these things in Anambra State that we can look up to and say, okay, because of Peter will be this thing changed in Anambra State. And so it can also change in Nigeria if he comes to be at the helm of affairs. Okay. Uh, to, 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 to give you a very simple answer to this issue. You don't expect anything to change in a, in a part of the country that already has been marginalized, that has been denied every right to the whole fundamental right of the, a, a, a nation. The southeastern zone has been signaled out as a place that they, 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 they don't care what happens. And this is the reason that led to the agitation and the, the, the continuous fight of the young people there that they don't want to continue in this business of Nigeria. It's not working. It's not working. So me telling me to, or uh, asking me of what Peter B has done that we, that can justify him, or uh, you telling me Tunumbu has uh, done something in Lagos, is trash. What Tunumbu is benefiting here in Lagos is not produced by, it's not his work. There are a large population of people in Lagos who are making things to happen in Lagos. Don't forget Lagos it was the former capital of the country before moved out. Lagos is benefiting all the rights that the seaport, we have seaport that is supposed to be working in the Eastern Nigeria. Is it working? Don't, no. don't worry about yeah, Lagos. Just tell me about Anambra and very, be very okay. brief. We are, we're rounding off. My Please. brother... I cannot start telling you that this is what Peter B have done, this is what he has done, this is not what he has done. What I am, I can only tell you is that Peter B happens to be the only person that we can guarantee our future in his hand at this point in time. Because when he was the governor of Anambra State, he was also a, a guarantor. He guaranteed the future of the state. And I can tell you, the people of Anambra State, I'm not from Anambra State, but the people of Anambra State has made it clear that they have never seen anybody like Pitobi since the history of Anambra okay. State. So I stand on the people who said that Pitobi is the best person that okay. can handle this country at the stage where we are. Okay. And I don't need to look back again because there's no good in PDP and there's certainly no good in APC. So okay, now, thank, thank you. Thank you, Honorable Vincent Obani. Thank you very much. Um, we'll still engage you in uh, subsequent uh, programs. Uh, but you are the Director General of the Nigerian Youth, and uh, we're hoping that you are mobilizing as much as possible for the 2023 election to be very successful. So thank you for coming on the program today, sir. Thank you much. Okay. We'll go on a short break now for us to bring you the news, and after the news, we'll continue. Stay with us.